you're almost like the archetypical Dutch startup founder, uh, in a sense that you're, um, you know, I wouldn't say emotionless, but always looking for, yeah, the pragmatic solution. I think that's the, the, the most valuable word here that we're going to use. How do you try to approach things when it comes to business? I, th I think two things. Uh, one, um, uh, as the business is scaling, it is way less about me and or my co-founder and it's way more about the whole team yeah, and and um, and within the team of course we have also uh, other leaders uh, who are driving big teams um, and so I think being the general or, or, or the leader what kind of leader are you is, is, is less uh, something which which keeps me uh, uh, awake at night I think what what is the common ground with our form of leadership is that we always try to look what is the best for the company. And, and um, it is and should not be about egos or not uh, about what you want to achieve solely or uh, where you can or cannot deliver. It's about what is the best for the company. And once... Uh, anyone of us, including myself, becomes the blocker of the growth we are uh, uh, trying to aim for, mm -hmm. then we have to deal with it. So. Yeah. so I've also learned that you're uh, on the sales side of things mostly the strategist. So you're scaling rapidly right now, but you only have an office in Amsterdam and Groningen while you're you know, doing business in 50 countries. So uh, can you explain a bit, how do you, how do you do a sales strategy internationally with only one local office? Yeah, so we have a, a, a SaaS solution, software as a service, uh, which you can serve from anywhere in the world. Uh, so the big question is, do we have to be uh, in face-to-face -face contact with our customers uh, either for the sales process or the service process. Good question, can you answer that? Um, in our case, it doesn't need to be. Uh, luckily not. And that is one of the beauties, how we can scale fast. Mm -hmm. uh, we're scaling fast because the product can deliver that, mm -hmm. because it is a fast and generic um, market, and because there is a mutual pain point within the industry. Mm -hmm. So, and then if you know that, then, and if your ambition is to scale fast, then you have to find a way uh, which indeed which go-to-market strategy fits best. And looking at SaaS products like ours, typically you end up either with field sales, which is less scalable, of course. Uh, you have to go knocking on doors everywhere. Exactly. Or you go for uh, uh, lighter touch sales like inside sales model. And this is the playbook we, d we drive. Okay, so what's inside sales? Inside sales means you use typically a combination of marketing automation, uh, sales reps and account executives doing either phone conversations, online demos in order to engage with customers and to make them understand what the product is about, what the value proposition is about in order to make them subscribe to the service. So you raised 5.5 million in seed funding and in a quite remarkable way you have somewhere in the region of 40 45 investors is that correct yeah i, th I think that's quite uh, accurate that, well that's it's quite a lot uh, normally you would typically would maybe have in this phase maybe five or ten investors maximum um so how do you keep them all updated how do you keep them all satisfied do they call you in the middle of the night or or each week um well, I think it starts with the fact that I'm extremely proud of uh, the group of investors we have who back up both financially as well as uh, in different ways with either opening the network or uh, bringing the knowledge uh, to us. What kind of investors are they? We have uh, people from the hotel industry, hoteliers, either owning or driving uh, a single hotel or uh, having multiples. Uh, which is, of course, I think one of the best recognitions, especially uh, with them joining us already in the early stage, of that we are really onto something. But also uh, uh, either current or former entrepreneurs from the online industry. Uh, Nalden, right? With Ronald uh, Hans? Yeah, 
uh, from uh, the founder of uh, We Transfer. Yeah, yeah. It was obviously very good in in understanding product and 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 UX UI. Um, so yeah. yeah, so I'm very uh, p proud of that group, um, and I think. But they don't call you like each um, week, each day. Well, I think there there are two things. One, with a big group like that, they there there's also the the understanding that it is less about a daily um, or a very frequent uh, contact. But we um, uh, try to update, uh, give them updates uh, regularly. Every month they receive uh, a report uh, on uh, both, a for, uh, both a written as well as a KPI-driven update on the, on the business. Um, and at the same time, I think it all starts with the fact that they trust both the team as well as the proposition, uh, yeah. yeah, to do uh, so, but the this best report in their is interest. But this report is very detailed, right? I mean, you, you almost have to be, it's almost like a data room for investors, isn't it? Um, well, we are a very data-driven company, so... So what I do you tell them? What's in the email? Revenue? Obviously. Leads? Um, yeah, multiple things. So, so we look at growth from a different perspective, from um, uh, customers, from uh, product ang uh, with a product angle, uh, uh, around people, uh, talent. Um, we look at uh, things like churn. Uh, we look at the financial state of the business, yeah.